I was very mentally stressed because due to the first two weeks, I could not produce enough breast milk to feed her. I had this mindset that I need to breastfeed her exclusively. One day he comes home from work and I'm holding Maya by the window. And then I said to him, John, you know how many times today I felt like jumping off this building. I felt like opening the window and just throwing myself and Maya out. Your baby has arrived. For the past nine months, you have been preparing for this new addition to your family. Now that this bundle of joy is finally in your arms, you begin to understand why life will never be the same again. The growth from infant to toddler in the first 12 months of your child's life is filled with incredible transformations. At the same time, caring for an infant fully reliant on you 24-7 can take a toll. What with the regular feedings, the constant changing of diapers, the complicated baths, all that cleaning and disinfecting, and of course not forgetting the lack of sleep. For me, first few months was uh, quite he hectic. I have a lot of puking, vomiting, nauseous, headache, dizzy, everything. And I'm still working. No. <laughs> Well, the flat-out answer is first, no, it doesn't get easier with every subsequent child, but I think we feel a lot lighter. It's easier to shortlist why the baby is crying, what the baby could want, and easier to rule other things out. In that respect, it's easier maybe for the mind, um, but in terms of energy level, whoa. <laughs> I think it exponentially increases with each child. Some of the hospitals actually provide a lot of um, training baby preparation programs um, that help in teaching how to take care of the baby after the baby comes out and also what are some of the signs to look for as well in terms of whether the baby is hungry or whether you are breastfeeding the baby correctly. So these are some of the ways in which new parents can gain support and knowledge um, to be able to better equip them to know how to take care of a baby. It is during this period where it really sinks in how parenthood is such a dramatic shift. While during the pregnancy, parents-to-be may have the head knowledge that things will be different, nothing quite prepares them for what is to come when their baby arrives. The first one month, we do not have the confinement nanny because due to COVID yeah. and also the price to pay is twice or triple. Yeah. So we had to depend on each other. At the same time, he had a job opportunity, yeah, so he switched his career and then uh, he don't have leave to take, so yeah. we have to juggle. I think in terms of envision, the taking care of the kids uh, is more or less expected. I think it's the emotions that were not expected. It drains yeah. us emotionally. For me, I learned along the way, in most intense moment, I will inform Amy to tell her that I need some space and give myself those moments to, to respond or at least to, to acknowledge my emotions. One thing I've learned from John is that when it's time to rest, rest without guilt. He does it very well and he always asks me like, why don't you just lie down for half an hour more? It's so that you can last longer. It's so that you can do better. <laughs> I can't have half an hour more. There's a societal expectation that mothers should be the main parents taking care of babies. However, these days, many modern dads are stepping up their game when it comes to taking care of their young ones. Actually, I don't call this my society, but more like aunties. When they see the baby in the carrier with him, they're always like, wow, Papa carry you, so special. And I'm like, he's stronger, he's bigger, and it makes a lot more, I mean, to us, it's more commonsensical that he carries the baby. La. Fathers can technically do everything that mothers can, um, with the exception of breastfeeding. Perhaps fathers can do, especially for mums, would be to give them some time, perhaps like one to two hours away from the baby, so that mums can feel a little bit more like themselves, um, and that their lives don't just revolve around the baby, which is very much the case in the first few weeks after delivery. Under such trying circumstances, it's not surprising that emotions run high during this period of parenthood. Sometimes it can go beyond stress or baby blues. According to the Ministry of Health, postnatal depression affects one in 10 women who have just given birth. I was very mentally stressed because due to the first two weeks, 
I could not produce enough breast milk to feed her and then I had this mindset that I need to breastfeed her exclusively so I don't want to feed her formula milk. I was using my phone and I start uh, going through my Facebook and all the mothers have like a lot of frozen milk in their fridge, their breast milk. I was like thinking why I cannot do the same. I felt that uh, I cannot give the best for her. And that's when it hit me really hard and I start crying. I think almost every night when my husband is not around, mm. when he's at work. There's one that Amy mentioned, I came home from work and she told me, I got shocked that day also when she told me that she was standing by the window thinking whether she could just jump off the and then to end it all. I think that was, that came as a shock to me also because I never hear of this aspect of her before. Mm. So afterwards, when I was diagnosed with postnatal depression and when we saw a professional counsellor, one of the questions I asked her was, how come there were no signs? Why was there no build-up? Why was it a sudden like, <gasps> from nothing to suicidal to all these flashes of like how to kill yourself, how to end your child's life? Mm. And then she told us that it's because most high-functioning adults, they don't even see the signs before that. We started to be more cautious when the other children came. Like, postnatal depression will come. Uh, how is it going to come? And one of the things I started to do was I started to journal very diligently. So even if I had suicidal thoughts or like images flashing in my mind, I would quickly pen it down. And then in the evening, I would discuss it with Jonathan whether I still felt like it or not. So at that moment, I might not feel depressed already, but I would still let both of us do the unravelling together. So actually the symptoms of peripartum depression is very similar to major depressive disorder with the exception that the symptoms actually occur during pregnancy itself or within the first four weeks after delivery. So some of the symptoms of peripartum depression are constantly feeling low mood, feeling hopeless, um, feeling that you don't have any interest in any activity at all, not being able to bond with your baby, um, overwhelming stress and anxiety about your baby, having panic attacks, insomnia or loss of appetite. So one thing to know is that peripartum depression is actually different from something that is called baby blues. So baby blues is something that is very common and it occurs for up to 75% of women after delivery itself. So some of the symptoms of baby blues are feeling um, mood swings, irritability, insomnia as well, and also feeling guilty that you're not happy. So the difference is that these symptoms are usually mild and transient, and it will go away by itself after two weeks. So generally, no treatment is required for baby blues. Um, it would just be a good idea to watch out for those symptoms when it comes because it may develop into peripartum depression. Despite the hard work and the challenges, there's no doubt that this period of being a parent can also be the most fulfilling. When she calls us Papa Mama and when <laughs> she hugs us and kisses us. Small happiness, we seek out small happiness. As parents, I think that's most important. Like most parents, um, the most mm. rewarding is milestones. First time they say mama, papa, these are really, really amazing moments. Connections with you, they smile, they give you a toy. I think beyond those milestones, seeing them growing in character, I think those are going to be very rewarding Yeah, for, for us as parents.